Cordell. The county seat of Washita County is one of the most beautiful towns in Oklahoma. I drove there early one morning to photograph the gorgeous neoclassical courthouse and picturesque town square. My trip took several unexpected turns and I serendipitously ended up in nearby Corn and Colony on the advice of locals. My name is Jeff Bell. Join me as I take you on a tour of these three photogenic towns in Washita County. I arrived in Cordell just after dawn and it looked like a movie set. The Grand Washita County Courthouse dominates the town square and ornate red brick buildings surround the central courtyard. It was Saturday and the town was completely empty and quiet, almost like the townspeople did it on purpose so I could take pics of all the buildings without a bunch of cars in the way. Luckily there were some amazing clouds in the sky and the sun bathed the town in stunning morning light. The town square has several cool buildings like the vintage movie theater and ornate city hall. Plus, there's a window with, let's just say, some controversial flags. You know, it adds to the small town charm. On this building, the faded letters say undertaking, and there are murals and old adverts on the brick walls. To appreciate Cordell, or any small town, you must walk around. You can't appreciate all the details if you just drive by. While exploring on foot, I saw details like banks spelled out of the tiles in this old letter box. There are two marijuana dispensaries on the town square, and if you're familiar with Oklahoma, you're probably surprised there's not more. Oklahoma has the most dispensaries of any state. Not per capita, just total. As I walked around, I wandered into an antique store on Main Street, just east of the square. I chatted with the amiable owner, who rocks a baller stash. I got regulars coming from all over the place. Really? Yeah. And they come out here, they have a good time. I treat everybody like family when they come in, and it's just fun. Nearly every town in Oklahoma has a Dollar General, so I walked through the store to see what all the fuss was about. Why would you buy a shovel here when you can buy a vintage shovel for a fraction of the price at J&D's? I drove around town and saw some quirky houses, photogenic old cars, and abandoned buildings. Back in the day, every one of these towns had a car dealership. Now you have to go to a larger town or big city as all of these are defunct. If you want to move to Cordell, you can do so cheaply. The medium home price is $120,000. This reminds us that America doesn't have a housing shortage. We have a human distribution problem. Average rent in New York City is $3,300 for a studio and over $6,000 for a four bedroom apartment. You could pay off a house in a couple of years with that kind of cash in Cordell. I took a look around the flea market where you could buy one bowling pin and a local told me to check out the town of Corn on my way home. When locals give me advice, I always listen. So I drove west to the small town of Corn, population 558. Corn is a tight-knit community of hard-working farmers and ranchers, and you see a lot of new cars and pretty nice houses around. But the decline of rural America is evident here. The town used to have two schools, but the private Corn Bible Academy moved to Clinton, and the Washington Heights Public School closed in 2010. Now kids have to go to Cordell, which is 17 miles away, to attend school. Corn has three churches and a large and beautiful Mennonite church not far from town. Schools may be closing, but the house of God stays open in Oklahoma. Corn was founded by German immigrants in 1903, and it used to be spelled with a K. But they changed their name to the way we spell it now due to anti-German sentiment during World War I. I walked around town and took photos on Main Street. There's some cool buildings like this one with vintage signs, old school gas pumps, and a classic car out front. This guy saw me with the camera and said, hey, there's a nice museum here. If you ask at the Corn Cafe, they have a key and will open it for you. I ordered a hearty country breakfast at the Corn Cafe and inquired about the museum. They said they didn't have a key, but they called the person who did. 15 minutes later, a lovely lady opened up the museum. I have to say, it was pretty great. The museum has a collection of artifacts from the past and some fascinating displays. The museum is kind of like looking through an old photo album at your grandma's house. I think my favorite exhibit was about a free slave who settled in corn. In a town of primarily white Germans, he added a lot of diversity to the place. The friendly lady also told me they were having a 4th of July party and to come back in the evening for free food. The lady also recommended I go to Colony, a nearby town with bright new murals on Main Street. The town of Colony has more murals per capita than anywhere else in the world. That's our story and we're sticking to it until proven otherwise, declares the town's website. I walked down Seeger Street, the main road in Colony, and photographed the resplendent murals. The first mural was painted in 1994, but the glowing Native American themed murals you see here today were recently painted by Eric Tippiconic. 
You can tell the people of Colony love their town and are working hard to improve it. Colony reminded me a lot of Gate, a town in the Panhandle with murals and art on the abandoned buildings and old train station. I visited Gate as part of a 500 mile road trip to the Oklahoma Panhandle that took me from Woodward to Black Mesa, the highest point in Oklahoma.